let's see if any open invoices are there for the company. Mm. And, and, and payment type in status is unpaid. Okay, no one's status is proved. Great, so there are. Hmm. No worries, we still have few invoices in this new tenant, which we can use for our practice. So let's open this invoice. So what we'll do today, we'll record the customer payment, we'll write off some amount, we'll put some amount on account, we'll create deposits also, okay? And if time permits, we'll start the customer contract, otherwise uh, we'll do it tomorrow. So, there are two ways to record the customer payment. One is from the related action of the invoice, and the second one is from the task by typing in record customer payment in the search bar. So, let's see if this gentleman has the access. He doesn't have, as it's a new tenant. Let's assign the role to him first. Open new tab. Mm, is a payroll guy now. That's what. But this is really bad. Now again, I have to do it with from scratch. System user base. I think all the user base are there uh, for recording. They may have put something. Da 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 da. da. Someone has changed his role or it is? Environment, actually, this is a different environment tenant. So whatever security we had given our configurations we had given, that's gone now. Why? Because it was a proxy, no? He was actually earlier. No, no, no. See, uh -huh. this is a different company tenant. Suppose earlier we were using IBM, for example. Okay, okay. Now they have given Deloitte tenant, like that. Mm -hmm. So obviously, uh, it's a different tenant, different company. So everything has gone. Hmm. AR specialist collection manager. Okay, let's give him that this role. But for GMS uses, someone should be having that role. Let's see who has that. Uh, If you have any friend in Dubai, you can ask him or her to do shopping for you. So there is a like uh, shopping festival has begun for three days till 29th. And on all the brands, they are giving like 70% discount. Yeah. yeah. So only Gucci, Prada, Chanel,
Yes, awesome. Okay, so one is through this option, customer payment record. So what is the amount? Uh, total invoice amount is this. It's unpaid, right? So for now, I'll just say hundred, and later on the change or uh, the status of this invoice will say partially paid. Okay. So let's say we have received uh, hundred dollars only for this invoice, and then we'll take the same invoice again to say full payment. So it's a record. Okay, and I'll just say hundred dollars here. Payment reference is like a check number. You mentioned the check number, slip number, slip number, and memo, testing. Okay. This we'll see next example. Again, we'll do in a dollar deposit. Okay, so it's showing this invoice. Save and apply payment. Okay, so payment amount is hundred dollars here. I right, submit. It's done. Now, if you look at the payment group, this is successfully completed. If you click on this, okay, so customer transaction. And if you look at the accounting of this one, payment, obviously, you have to see the cash for the payment, so there will be an accounting for it. So, undeposited receipts to AR trade. $100. Now let's go back. Remittance advice. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So earlier it was two, four, nine, six, eight, seven, five. Now it is two, four, nine, six, seven, seven, five. Payment status earlier it was unpaid. Now it has changed to partially paid. That's again to a hundred dollar. This time we created a deposit also. Deposit means simple, it's simple. So when you get the check from the client, obviously, first of all, you record the entry of that check. That this is the check number against this invoice I have received, correct? And then once you do the entry, you go to bank and then you deposit the check. So it's the same thing. Record customer payment and create deposit. So I'll just show you the task also. And then we'll do it from the invoice rated action. So you will say record customer payment. So again, you can do it either from this task or create customer deposit. And we can do deposit from here. But typically, I've seen and even like our configurations also, I have seen using this related action button only. So we'll again do a record. Okay. This time we'll say create deposit. Now, in which bank account we have received the customer payment? So we'll say Bank of America checking. Deposit reference when you deposit the check, remember all of us, we attach it with the receipt, white receipt kind of paper slip that this is our check number and all those things. So, deposit reference. So, slip number. Something like this. Again, we are saying that we see only hundred dollars right now. Okay, payment reference uh, check. With this. So this is basically uh, in case of O two C guys who are into cash uh, like uh, receipting, they can do this method. Like once they have the payments in bank, they can just go and apply it to the invoices. Yes, so when the auto scheme or the treasury team receive mm -hmm. the payment, this is more of treasury work. Okay, when they receive the payment, they apply it to the invoices, or it can be a mix of both. You can ask the O2C team to do it for their invoices, that mm -hmm. you handle your own job. But for supply invoices, it's mostly done by the R2R team. 
ap why not ap team supply invoices are in uh, like no, handled no. by payment uh, process is a when it comes to receiving the payment anyone can do it but when it comes to processing the payment from your pocket to someone else's pocket it requires a review okay in the settlement run bp will talk about it we'll see that uh, we can have a lot of bp steps also there that okay how much payment you are processing from our bank to whom you are processing okay so companies put lot of criteria when you transfer the amount from your bank account to other bank account so that's why so you would always see that in the customer side in the bps you would hardly have few steps okay in the invoice you will have maximum four or five maximum but if it goes to expense bp you will see that in expense report or in supplier invoice even right there will be 20 steps also because yeah there is because of the review point but r2 or doesn't apply the payment no the payment is getting released by ap guys only no no it, it can be done by both r2 r more of like r2 r and treasury team or p uh, if not bp sorry it's uh, what you call it uh, the procurement uh, payable team also but uh, in my recent project i'm not seeing that i'm seeing that only treasury team is doing this in my previous project also they had given access to only one guy from the payable team but majorly it was done by the treasury team only. okay because treasury takes care of all the ingoing and outgoing cash mm -hmm. okay so now let's again say hundred dollars save and apply payment so again seven dollars So it's done. Wait, 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 wait. You did it. Okay. Listen, uh, I just wanted to check. In mm -hmm. the application itself, directly there is this amount, how much of that check or how much of that amount, why transfer is getting utilized here. And rest of the, it is directly applied to the uh, invoice. It is not directly applied to the client. It is directly applied to the invoice. Ah, right? Correct. We don't apply it to the client balance. Okay. We apply so it to the invoice the amount. Uh, that's why we had those write off amounts and discount and all. Correct. Against which invoice we are writing on the amount. Yes. Okay. Now that that are our coming examples. How to write off amount, how to put amount put an amount on account and all those things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, if you go to the payment application, let's go back to our invoice. Hmm. It's partially paid again. Two four nine six, so two hundred dollars have been debited. Now let's see a full example of like fully paid invoice. So let's copy this invoice now. Amount that we have received. Finally, we have received the full amount. Okay. Now, if you see this invoice, you see, say paid and amount due is zero. Now, we'll see a couple of examples of write off on account. And uh, let me create a payment term which will show us some discount uh, also. So we'll get to see that uh, discount amount as well. Okay, so let's go to this maintain payment terms. Let's see if someone has uh, created one. So yeah, this one is good, 2% 10 net 30, so 2% discount. Okay, good. Let's see if we can copy this in this. Hmm. 
Brian would say one. Mm -hmm. Two percent is also fine here, please. Okay, we'll select this payment term. This one. So we can see the discount functionality also. Okay, looks nice. Okay, so it's 10,000. Now, let's say I'm recording the custom payment. And I'll set 10,000 only. Actually, I should have calculated that. So see, the system will automatically show the discount amount here. So the exact amount which client is paying is 9,800 because we are giving you $200 discount, right? But suppose he had sent this extra $200, okay? So what you can do, you can put this 200 to on account that we have received an extra payment from the client, okay? So both examples we are seeing in one single go that the discount is also visible based on the payment terms and the payment time and amount to place on account as well, which is $200. So now if I just hit, mm -hmm. sorry. So this, this one you were saying, if in case of he had paid 10,200, that 200 we could have put in there. Correct, yes, I'll, I'll show you that example, okay. okay. Okay, for now I'll just hit submit. done okay now what i'll do i'll just quickly copy this invoice again and this time i will select a non-discounted uh, payment term so i'll just copy this and let's take the same example of ten thousand rupees for dollars let's say immediate Okay, now I'll just show you what if he has sent a 10,500. So I'll say 10,500. Now the system will tell you that there's an extra $500 the remaining amount to apply because the invoice is for, for 10,000 only, but you got the check for 10,500. So there is a $500 extra. Okay, so what do you want to do? So you can say, I am putting on this one account. So if I submit here. It's done. Okay. Now suppose you have received this extra payment and now you want to refer it back to the client. That okay, we are uh, giving back to you because we had received extra from you. So there's a task called create customer refund. <laughs> okay, it's in progress right now. Maybe it's uh, the integration is firing from the back end. So we may have to wait for that. Uh, should even step completed. Any other step? Okay. Let's see one more time. 
-hmm. in the previous case we had only received 10000 so 200 was applied as discount but manually we had put 200 on the top corner right ah, so 10200 rupees see 10000 was the total invoice amount but 2% yes. was the discount so 2% mm -hmm. discount means 200 dollars right so we had put mm -hmm. that amount in discount field but why did we put 200 <coughs> on account then <laughs> i'll tell you see invoice amount was 10000 okay check sent by client 10000 okay. okay discount amount was 200 dollars right so i did how much okay okay so you applied? were saying okay you were saying already the invoice amount was 10000 check was also sent yes. for 10000 so we had yes. additional 200 okay okay correct so again okay. he has made it 200 dollar extra payment correct mm -hmm. ideally he should have sent the check for this 9800 because we clearly told him that he can pay within 10 days we give him 200 dollar discount mm -hmm. so but he did a mistake and he sent the check for 10000 dollars but anyways we have received 200 dollar extra right so that 200 dollar we have put on the on account so that's why it nullifies it clear yes yes okay shiri priti is this clear to you yeah yeah it's clear yeah. yes okay great now we'll talk about create customer refund So anytime, okay, in this create customer refund, as you can see, Workday is retiring the create customer refund task. We recommend that you opt into customer refund optimization feature instead by accessing the maintain feature opt-in report. You must have access to the setup system domain system for Chile. Contact your Workday administrator for further help. So they have uh, bringing a new feature and they're de deprecating this feature. So that's why you see here, do not use here. But you can still use it till September. So no need to wait. Okay. So company is our GMS USA. This was something. Yeah, I forgot what's the customer name. Atlas, I believe. One second. Yeah, it's Atlas. Atlas only, right? Yeah. Yeah, Atlas. Thank you. Pretty. Okay, so let's do it again. So the customer payment status is in progress right now. So let's wait for it. So create customer refund is now we'll see uh, some refund scenarios or write off amount scenarios. So we'll just come here. We'll just copy this invoice. Okay. And we'll say five thousand dollars. Now, with this, ah, two nine zero. Mm 
Now let's record the customer payment. And so we have seen all these options, right? Add it, hold from payment, write off bad debt. So now we'll write off bad debt. Okay, that the customer has said that I'll not pay a single penny. I'm running away, I'm bankrupt, whatever it is. Okay, so go to this write off bad debt task. Say <coughs> default right of reason. What happened? It's a bad debt. Currency translation, customer got bankrupt, disrupted amounts. Let's say customer goes bankrupt. Okay. So the right of amount is entire 5,000 because as customer has gone bankrupt, they will not pay a single penny. So hit OK here. Okay. So because it's a bad debt process, okay. So somebody has to make sure that yes, definitely it's a bad debt scenario and the customer will not pay. So it has gone to Martin Davis. So let's process Martin Davis to approve it. That's it is approved. Okay, so this is the noise. The amount you can see has become zero here. The amount is zero because the customer went bankrupt. Okay, so all the activities you can track from here. The staff, a write off happened on this particular date, and these are the details. Okay, clear with this example also? Yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now let's go back to the same. <coughs> okay, so find. Actually, I want to show you a very good thing, uh, which I learned uh, just uh, two months back. And it's an interesting advanced level thing. So there was a requirement from our client uh, that reminded me that I have to work on a ticket today. Yes. So we have a requirement from the client that uh, whenever they submit the invoice and the invoice is approved, Okay, so final approval has been done on that invoice, which technically means that everyone has reviewed that all the details are correct, everything looks fine, and so on. No one should be able to make the changes in the invoice. Okay, just like we see options here in this one. Okay. Other you know, options like change, just invoice, and all those things. So when we submit the invoice and that is approved, then no one should be able to make the, because he's Martin Davis. If I go back to with uh, Teresa Serrano, I'll show you, start boxing. So we tried a lot of ways to do that, but could not achieve it. Because of somehow, we started looking into community, reaching out to networks. How to stop that? The first way was disabling domain access to change any customer lines or header details. But what was happening is like it was happening for all of the users and the O2C team in one go. But there were certain exceptions and scenarios where they ha must have done this. 
or must have to do it for X, Y, Z reason. And uh, because there was a big team in order to see uh, for that client. <clears throat> so that was not happening. That was not possible because it means like we had to rework on all the security groups and everything. And then we again have to reassign them back to different domains and security groups. So that was a big TJ task. So strictly no, big no. Then I found out this way while going through community and then BP also. So there are two things here. Let me go back here, find customer invoice. So company. And here we have Mr. James USA. Uh, Customize Atlas International. Okay, invoice. Oh, date on or after. Let's see, it's from you. Hmm. If I look at this invoice, 289. Okay. You can change like edit approval invoice, you can add DPO number, you can change DPO number and all those things. You can add the note. But the requirement was that once an invoice is approved, no one should be able to make any changes at all. No changes at all. Not a single change. For that, there's a super cool feature called added customer account option. Added customer account option. Here you have to set the company first. Now this will be applicable on all the company basis, not the customer basis. It gets applied on the company level basis that for this company, for all of the customer invoices for this company, if they are finally submitted and approved, then not a single change is allowed after that. So whatever change you have to do, you play around until the final approval happens, or you don't ask the final approver to approve the invoice. But once it is finally approved, you will not be able to change the details in the customer invoice. So this is a checkbox here. Yesterday, Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, this was the question only I, what I was asking, but you said this is there that we can still change the invoices. That is what I was saying, like post once we do the billing, if people ah. can do the changes, then that is a problem, right? Ah, but that is available. But uh -huh. maybe I did not understand. Sorry, I did not understand the question completely or the functionality you were asking for. But this is the functionality I wanted to tell you. Okay, so we, do have a, so we do have an option of like, you know, bro blocking the editing option for yes. uh, once the invoices are approved. So we need once to come Once the invoice here. is finally printed, okay, mm -hmm. after that, no one should be allowed, okay, or would be allowed to make any changes. As you can see, if you select prevent changes to the invoice after final print run, you can't clear it after you create invoices. So once it's done, it's done. You cannot uncheck it later on. So be very careful about this option. Once an invoice is approved and finally printed, no one would be able to make changes in the customer invoices. Clear? Yes. And this change is a one time because if somebody, if we have a client account. Yes, one time. Every okay. time you set up a new company or old companies, you have to do this once only. Once and if you, you wanted to uncheck it, if system won't no, no. Okay. So after this, if I hit OK and I anytime I create, I won't don't want to do this right now because it's a practice and then I should be spoiled this for everyone. Yeah. But once it's checked, you hit OK. And next time you next second you want to come back, you want you to do that. Okay. So discuss it carefully with your client and uh, the team members.
that do you want to go with this approach or not? You cannot go and revert the changes. Once it's done, it's done. I guess in most of the cases, it is actually getting frozen only. They must be having it another option like to see the, uh, I mean, draft version of the invoice before final printing. Correct. So that's just like all part of review and approvals only. That once yes. I submit, the approval will check, okay, everything details are correct or not first. Maybe the air specialist, then the air manager, then the uh, regional controller and, on, and so on. It's about mm -hmm. money. So you want to make sure everything is correct there in the noise. But in Workday, the thing is that once it is approved, like once the processor is doing the billing and it is directly hitting the account, right? If there is no pro mm. approval hierarchy is there. Correct. Obviously, the sub ledger accounts, uh, the sub ledger activity has been done and it has definitely hit the ledger accounts. Yes. So, mm -hmm. okay, fine. I mean, uh, general in general cases, once an invoice is printed, uh, like once the final approval is done, uh, it is not allowed to edit it. If you want to reverse, then you have to do that, raise that credit note that you had showed us. Correct. Yesterday. Yes. Yes. You're right. You can do entire amount credit adjustment. Okay. And then you create a fresh invoice. Yes. Clear? Yes.